Today we're going to be looking at the volume of general prisms. Specifically, we are going to be talking about the cube, the rectangular prism, and a triangular prism. The formula that we have when we're looking at general prisms is volume is equal to big B times H. The reason we have that capital letter B is because it's not just for the bottom or the base. It's for the area of the base. So we are going to be finding the area of the base of our shape and then we're gonna multiply it by the height. So the height is gonna be measured from base to base. So when we're looking at the cube, remember when we talked about this, we said that we have a base and a base. They are parallel to each other. That's what makes it a prism. And so we need to find the area of this base. Well, the area of the base is a square, and we're very familiar with how to find the area of a square. We multiply the two sides by each other. So when I measure, I get 10.5 centimeters. And I know that it's a square, so it's going to be 10.5 in the other direction as well. So for my cube, I am going to find the area of the base, volume equals the area of the base. So 10.5 times, I'm gonna do that in parentheses, 10.5. And then we had to multiply that by the height. And so our height is also going to be 10.5 because it is a square and they are all the same. So then we're going to multiply that times 10.5 times 10.5 times 10.5 gives me the volume equals 1,157. And I'm going to round, oh, wow, well, it's only good. 625 thousandths. And I measured it in centimeters and its volume. So it's cubed. We can remember that because we're doing three dimensional, the shape inside. And so three dimensional, the three that we have there. Okay, so then we said we were going to look at the rectangular prism. Okay, so for my rectangular prism, again, I am seeing those bases. Because it's a prism, they have to be parallel. So it's named as a rectangular prism because there's a rectangle parallel to a rectangle. We could turn it this way and it would not actually change anything, but we will look at it this way for now. Okay, so we need to find the area of the base. So we are going to find the area of a rectangle. How do we find the area of a rectangle? Good. Area equals the length times the width. So the volume equals, so to find big B times H, we have to do the area, which is, we're gonna multiply the length times the width, and then we're gonna multiply it by the height of that. And if you recall from sixth grade, length times width times height. That is where they came up with that for you to be able to easily memorize. Instead of the volume equals big B times H. So
So let's measure, we need the length. So our length is going to be 10.2. I guess I should write that. Volume equals the length was 10.2 times the width. Width is 5.4. And then we want to multiply that times the height. Now this is a multiplication sign here. I'll make it as a multiplication sign. So it's easier to tell there. So you don't get it confused with the decimal. And then the height, the way that it's sitting currently on the base. So the height would be 5.4 as well. So then we can multiply all three numbers together. 10.2 times 5.4 times 5.4 equals so the volume is 297 and 432 thousandths. And again, I measured in centimeters cubed. We always wanna put our unit behind so we are knowing what we've measured in. Finally, we want to look at the triangular prism. So we're going to start with that formula. Volume is equal to big B times H. We need to find the area of the base. So let's look at this shape. We want the base, the area of the base. Is this rectangle the base of this shape? Good, it's not the base because if I have it at the bottom, there is nothing parallel to it. There's not a rectangle that is parallel to it. It is named because the base is a triangle. It's named based on the base. So therefore, we need to find the area of this triangle. Okay, so remember the area formula for a triangle is volume equals, so area would be one half base times height. And then we're multiplying that by the height from base to base. Okay, and we'll get them to that when we get to that measurement. Okay, so we need the base and the height of the triangle. So the base is 10.5. So one half times 10.5 times, and then the height is going from the base to the tippy top making a right angle, and that's going to be 9.1. So times 9.1. And then we want the height, the height from base to base. So it is not that 9.1 that was going from here to here. It is the height from the base that we can see at the top to the base that we would be at the bottom. So the height of that three-dimensional shape, not of that two-dimensional triangle. And so therefore, when we measure, we get 
0.3 centimeters. So the height, 10.3 centimeters. So what I would like to do at this point is I would like to change that one half to 0.5 when I put it into my calculator because I know that they are the same thing. It just makes life easier. So 0 0.5 times 10.5, whoops, that's an eight, times 9.1 equals, so that's what's in parentheses, is that 47 and 775 thousandths. And we're gonna multiply what was in parentheses times 10.3. Okay, so I'll just write that out just so that you can see it. So volume equals what was in parentheses equaled to 47.775. And I'm not rounding any of this. It's only going to the thousands place at this point. And I want to be as precise as possible. So at this point, I wouldn't round it. Whoops, times 10.3. And then when I multiplied that, I got my final answer, which I probably wouldn't go that far out, so we will round to the thousand, uh, thousandths place since that's what we've done all of the other ones to. 492 and 80 three thousandths because the five is going to round that two up and centimeters cubed. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed our volume lesson.